when your faith becomes a part of your music yeah. and that the truth becomes a part of your music, it's hard for people to swallow. But in the same sense, that's what attracts people to the call. That's what people want to hear from yeah. the call. They want to hear spirit, the, 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 the fight between the principalities of, of powers. I think, I think the conscious mind of a lot of people want to keep things light and breezy and surfacy. You know, I think, because it's easy. You know, and, and also you don't want music that's going to push a whole lot of buttons, <laughs> emotional buttons, that, things you don't want to deal with. And, but you know, I think below, right below the surface, I think people are very, are hungry for that exact thing that they're running away, from, that their conscious, conscious mind might be running away from. I think we separate life too much from, from spiritual. I don't know what it is. I was reading, I was talking with a friend of mine just last night. One of my favorite authors is Frederick, Frederick Beekner. And Beekner wrote about the trouble with like church. And the trouble with church is we all go in and we sit quiet. It's totally unlike the other seven days of the week and the other, and, and, the, and the rest of the, pretty much the other 23 hours of Sunday. It's this one hour where we have to be in and be so reserved and it's tense and it's quiet and, and everyone gets real uptight if the, if the kids are making noise. And he was saying, this kind, of, this kind of thing should be done in the midst of children running around playing and having fun. We separate this flesh and blood, nuts and bolts, children laughing, screaming, grandpa over there snoring, all of that is supposed to be part and parcel of life. My life took this turn to where, and I saw a movie called Mean Streets, a Martin Scorsese movie, and he said, it was one of the first things in the movie is the lead character is in a church and he's holding his hand over a flame of a candle. And, and he, goes, he goes in every day because he knew a priest when he was a little kid who could sit there and hold his hand over a candle as long as he wanted. And this guy was going in and trying to build up. And it was a very spiritual movie. And, he, and right before the, the beginning music starts, at the intro of the movie, he says, uh, you know, there's two kinds of pain in this world. There's physical pain and there's spiritual pain. And believe me, my friend, the worst of the two is spiritual pain. And then this music comes in to be my baby, you know? <laughs> and, I, and all of a sudden I say, God, is it spiritual and, and be my baby. You know, rock and roll and, and the spiritual, all this stuff became one thing to me. And finally my life really turned into this kind of struggle between spiritual and the flesh, you know, <laughs> between be my baby and that, that holy candle. I mean, that's what it became, you know, that tension between the flesh and all. Do you feel that your faith uh, is, is as important in your music today that it is, than it was when you started the call? It's just been this journey, you know, and it's been crazy, and I, for better or for worse, wore my heart on my sleeve, you know, and I, a lot of it's kind of embarrassing, but I, that it's compulsive at the same time, and I've been through so many changes, you know. So if you look back on any interview I ever did, you know, I disclaim it. You know. Do you feel like you're uh, kind of a chameleon of sorts? Not a chameleon. I don't. I don't change to fit a situation. It's just more of the the process of slow wearing away of ignorance, you know. And it's a long, hard process. One of my favorite quotes ever was C.S. Lewis has said, be careful about uh, being profound. God made himself a baby. And yeah. God became a baby, you know? Absolutely. And it's like, I mean, I think that a lot of the Christian church and a lot of the church period in, in music feels like they have to be com continually profound and they have to be very careful. And, very, and I think that you're right. I think that we should sing about the good times and the bad times. Yeah. We should sing about... Uh, and, and if you're going to write about... If you want to touch people outside of the circle, outside of the Christian circle and yet yet accomplish the same thing, which is getting somebody in touch with their life at the deepest level. You know, write, par write a parable. Use your life as a parable. Do it, you know. That's a good way to do it. You know, life's hard, it's tough. Some people, you know, they, they're not gonna just accept, especially any kind of and, and rightfully so, you know, they, they don't accept a Pollyanna 
version of life, and well, they shouldn't. Um, and it's and and that's what they that's what they hear. The loudest voices from what it, what quote unquote the light side. The loudest voices are the voices to me of the of the fundamentalists and uh, the ultra simplistics and and to, in my opinion, you know, the, the head in the sand thing and e quick fix, easy fix, you know, that kind of stuff. And it's rejected by most people, anyone especially whose life's dealt them some difficult, difficult stuff. If the, it, it's all grace and mercy, and if you look at it any other way, you're doomed. But that feeling of doom is very important to write about. Oh!